Hi, this is Marlene, and I want to welcome you to another episode of Stories of the Supernatural. Whether you're watching a video or listening to a podcast, please like and subscribe to us so that you can get notification of when a new show is released. Links to videos or mp3 files can be found on MiamiGhostChronicles.com. Go to MarlenePardo.com for information on new book releases. I narrate several podcast series that can be found on major podcast platforms and can also be listened to via Alexa, Sonos, and other home systems. Look for Supernatural Storytime for scary storytelling, Nightshade Diary for classic horror and adventure stories, Stories of the Supernatural for interviews with different guests on the show. If you want to get noteworthy news about the paranormal world, true crime, conspiracy stories, and anything that is just plain weird, you can visit Strange Than Fiction Stories tab at MiamiGhostChronicles.com or find us on Blogspot. I want to thank you for being part of my audience, and I think you are all wonderful. Hi, everybody. This is Marlene with Miami Ghost Chronicles Stories of the Supernatural. How's everybody doing today? Good, I hope. I'm doing well. Um, as you could tell, I have the little mutts, all the little mutts in here with me in my office. And you might ask, pray tell Marlene, why do you have all the little mutts in your office? As you get, Jin Jin. He's, he's my, um, he's one of my rescues that uh, you know, even though he's in a big pack, he doesn't play well with others. He wants everything for him, but, you know, I'm sure anybody that has pets or children can relate to that. But anyway, yeah, we have him in there because my husband's bringing in groceries, and if not, they'll just get under him. So he says, I'm going to put him in your office for a bit. So, of course, if you hear all the strange noises, you guys have heard it before. That's just them. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, and um, everything has been good here dodging a lot of rainy weather because of course in central and north florida we still we're in the rainy season in the thick of it um no more disasters with mud pies because of those see what i mean and there's my other grouchy girl slim cut it out that's another rescue um but anyway uh just a lot of mud <laughs> i hate to say it but yeah so anyway, guys, but let's let's get on to the good part. I'm not even going to talk about the weather. I'm not even going to talk about the chickens. I'm not going to talk about anything. Um, and yes, and that squeaky, that's a squeaky, t a squeaky toy from my, who needs children? Just get pets. They follow you everywhere. They're underneath. You know, they, they make a lot of noise at inappropriate times, like squeaking on their toys and snarling. Hey, Jin Jin. And for those of you who have been around for a while, you know where that num name comes from, right? Jin Jin. That was from the I Dream of Genie show when they had a little dog. His name was Jin Jin. That's what he's named after. In case any of you, th I'm not talking about the Jin, like, okay. You know, people, the, 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 there's no sinister. This is an I Dream of Genie throwback. Okay, let me get on to the good part, guys. And this is a guest. This is the first time that he's been here on Stories of the Supernatural. And um, I know a lot of you are are going to be thrilled to hear that I've brought somebody back who's a psychic because a lot of you ask that I bring on psychics and his name is Jason Zook. He's a spiritual medium and I've explained to you before what the difference is between that and a regular psychic but we'll get into that later on again. Okay he's been providing accurate intuitive advice and guidance within many different social contexts since August of 2004. He relies upon intuition to forge connections to the other side in order to offer unique healing experience for those who seek communication with their departed loved ones. Uh, in January of 2017, he decided to offer intuitive guidance professionally so he can further provide clients with a chance to gain insight on matters within their life which require further attention and by working with others to confront existing obstacles and challenges. Uh, he provides clarity, reassurance to those who seek advice. Uh, he can, you can schedule an appointment with him and we're going, I'm going to have this information, by the way, in the credits of the show, and we'll repeat it at the end of the show. But um, you could, he also has a podcast called The Show, The Social Psychic Radio Show on Apple Podcasts and other platforms. And he also has a YouTube channel for all things spiritual and which promote mind, body, and health wellness. Help me welcome Jason. Jason, how are you doing today? What a beautiful introduction thank you marlene for having that's me all about show. you so that's good that's good i appreciate it i appreciate it i 
have to say that our interaction with each other between my interview and then doing this with you, it's like, it's, it's fun. It's just this yeah, is why we live. I really enjoyed speaking with you the last time. And by the way, for those of you, I went on his podcast show, like what, two weeks ago or yes. something like that. Sometimes I lose track. And it was great. And um, <laughs> I'm telling you, yeah, we, we had a lot of behind the, the scenes uh, conversations and laughs about things because uh, he's on the money about so much. Uh, but anyway, Jason, uh, I know all my audiences, whenever I bring a psychic, they, they want me, they want to find out what, what, how did you realize that you were psychic? Sure. I know some people have it from childhood and you have the ones that have a traumatic head injury, you know, and then they become psychic. What happened with you? You know, I think it really is in my DNA. My grandmother was very intuitive and psychic growing up, and my mom was a reluctant psychic. So when I was a little wow. kid, I had deja vu moments, deja vu moments as a kid. I remember I grew up in the 80s, you know, and I remember telling my mom and my grandmother, I felt like we'd done this before. I felt like we'd done this before. Really? And my grandmother pulled me aside because she was very, you know, very in touch with her psychic abilities. And she said, this runs in our family. Don't talk to people about it. They'll never understand it and just keep it to yourself. It's a gift, but you don't need to be public about it because society will never understand it. So for a good 20 something years, I kept it to myself. And when I got to law school and college, more so law school, I started getting premonitions about things. Like I was with some friends studying in a study group. And I remember telling one of my close friends, you know, your girlfriend, I think she's cheating on you. I think you're going to find a condom wrapper in the bathroom at some point when you go away. When oh my God. You know what's crazy? He and I went away on a trip to Tampa because I was in Fort Lauderdale for law school. And guess what? He found that exact condom wrapper after we got back from our trip. So there were moments back then. And I remember and one you time. Say, he must have. So you were not, not. That was like on the money. That was like. Yeah. Wow. He, he stayed with her another two years. And then after that, made a decision to get divorced. But. I started getting stuff like that all the time. And then when my grandfather passed away in uh -huh. August 12, 2004, we're coming up on the anniversary next week, he died. And when he died, I always had a premonition that I'd be by myself with no one to consult me about his death because my grandfather was my father figure. And okay. so his passing was a big event for me at the time. I didn't realize it in the okay. sense that it made me become a psychic medium. A spiritual awakening happened at his death. I was uh, I always had that premonition. I'd be by myself with no one to console me for seven years. I told everyone about it. Then my grandfather in 04 had a stroke and he was up in New Jersey and I got to see him the day after his stroke, but he was unconscious at that point. And I just remember his hands were communicating with me a certain way. And I broke down crying and I was real emotional. And then I went to Wisconsin and in Wisconsin, I wound up, uh, I had to go back to Tampa. I wound up in Wisconsin and in Wisconsin for a deposition, I was told my mom told me that night on August 12th that my grandfather passed. So I wouldn't be able to get back to New Jersey to see him. So I collapsed in the bed. And I sat back and I thought to myself, what does this mean? It is true. The premonition came real. It, 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 I'm by myself in the middle of Baraboo, Wisconsin, stranded with the flight canceled. No one to console me. My grandfather dies. Pivotal moment in my life. Wow. Orbs of light appear in the hotel room, like an Unsolved Mysteries episode. Orbs of light appear. And as they appear, um, my grandfather, a, a wave of unconditional love washes over me. And my grandfather tells me in some way, telepathically, whatever, son, I love you. Don't ever worry about me. Go get something to eat for yourself, and I will always be here with you. I love you. So I got up, went and got food. My best friend from high school calls me and says, hey, how's your grandfather? I go, he died. What do you mean he died? You're not upset? I'm like, well, why would I be upset? And she's like, Jason, where are you? <laughs> do you need to? Do you need us to come find you? Like, and I was like, actually, I'm in Baraboo, Wisconsin. She's like, wait, you're where? I thought you were in Tampa. I go, no, I got sent up there for my boss cover deposition. She's like, oh, my God, your premonition came, came true. I was like, yeah. And at that moment, I could sense that she was skeptical. And for the first moment, my psychic abilities were telling me something that my physical abilities, my physical senses didn't. So I said to her, Tracy, if you're skeptical about my grandfather's death, what about your grandmother? She died six months ago. What if she could say something to you right now? And she goes, well, she's not going to be able to do that. She's been dead for six months. And without saying anything, without noticing anything, I said, well, you know, your grandmother would probably say that she used to tuck you in at night for six years of your childhood when you were in the Poconos in the, in the mountains. And she used to take you there and she used to take the covers up to your head, kiss you in the forehead and say, don't let the bed bugs bite after reading you a story. And you know how you could drop the mic? <laughs> your friend dropped the phone. I heard clunk. And I was like, what's going on? And then I remember her future husband picks up the phone and says, what did you just say to Tracy? And I'm like, why? She's in the room, bathroom crying right now. And I'm like, what? So then she picks up the phone afterwards and she's like, how did you know that? I go, well, no, what? She goes, my grandmother did used to tuck me in at night for six years of my life in the Poconos. We would stay with her every summer. 
My mom and dad worked. And guess what? She kissed me on the forehead and she would say, don't let the bed bugs bite as a joke. And that freaked me out. <laughs> yeah, that is like, yeah, it's like, man, I didn't know that. Isn't it incredible when you, it validates for you as well. Oh, it, well, first off, at that point, I didn't even know what I was. So I freaked out. I'm in this foreign state, uh, you know, not in another country, but I'm in the middle. I know, of I know, but it's, yeah. I left the lights on. Let's just say it like that. I slept with the lights on for a good 10 years. It's like, hey, no more visitors, please. No more messages. Exactly. Exactly. That's it's it's um let me ask you, Jason, do you ever see them? Do you have they have because I hear of 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 psychic, especially mediums, that basically uh before they know how to put up um a barrier if you want to they actually have dead people, spirits coming, the ones that want to communicate, they come to yeah. them and they can see them. I can tell you this. Uh, they were they were more pranksters with me because I think being a medium when you're new to it, you don't know how to put up boundaries with spirits. Right. And I was like a lighthouse or like whatever you want to call it. And I would yeah. sleep in my room. And I remember this so vividly. I was traveling for work because I used to be, you know, I'm a lawyer in five states. So I used to go to different storm events. And I was in Texas at the time in 20, 2011. And I remember uh -huh. I'm sleeping on the bed, tired from working a long day as a lawyer. And all of a sudden my arm goes like up in the air. And then my leg up in the air. And I'm like waking up like that going, what the heck is going on? One time I got pushed to the side and I was just like, what is this? You know? And then finally I met a psychic who told me, you know, you need to button yourself up at night. And I started to learn these like grounding things and things that you could tell people like spirits. I'm not ready to deal with you right now until we're ready to talk. Leave me All my right. privacy. I need to live. And so those boundaries helped a lot. That's see, that's yeah. I've heard that, that sometimes at the very beginning people get like overwhelmed. Because... I was. I was, and I used to sleep, I still sleep with the door locked in my room just because that's just the thing for me. I seal off the door spiritually in my mind and I, I create Physically this. do it. How about the closet door? <laughs> closet doors don't bother me, but I'm gonna tell you that. I've had situations where I'd close the door and I wouldn't lock it. And I'd have like my mom come visit me or a friend come visit. And for some reason I'd wake up and the door's open, right? Somehow the door is open at 3 a.m. And I uh -huh. wake up at 3 a.m. and I'm like, why am I waking up in the middle of the night? I never wake up. And then I notice anytime the door's ever open in my, my room, I get disturbed in the middle of the night, whatever, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. So I, I close the door and I seal up and I meditate and I say prayers and I fall asleep. Yeah, believe it or not, that's your subconscious mind. It hears it. There's something that pulls you out of sleep because for you, that's your... You know what almost I I'm not, I'm not afraid of it anymore. When I first mm -hmm. started out, I was afraid. I just think spirits see us as somebody they can communicate with, connect to us, right. that they think that we can then link them up with their loved one that's left kind of thing or give them yeah. a message that needs to be shared. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just, and, and it depends also on your sensitivity. Sometimes you see what they look like, what they felt, oh, if, you know, know, whatever their state of mind was, or even physically, you know, I've heard some, some mediums will actually get physically affected. I do. You do? I, um, I have situations where I've channeled during readings. Uh, mm -hmm. This has happened last year with the pandemic. I work on a lot of verb, uh, virtual readings and Zoom readings and phone readings. And right. I will actually get on the phone with someone whose son died, for example, a sister and a mother right. on the phone with me in the car. And they did a okay. Zoom call. Uh, not a Zoom call. They did a, a FaceTime call. And I got up and I started walking around because it was on my phone. I started pacing okay. from room to room to room. And I'm like, Okay, is your son a pacer? Was he someone that used to walk around on the, and the mother started bawling and the sister started laughing? So one's crying, one's laughing because the sister knew exactly what her brother was doing to communicate to the mother about how she used to always yell at him for pacing because they used to have a landline phone back in the day. Oh my God. Yes. Cord, and when he would pace, he would stretch the cord out. So when I brought that up and I picked up his mannerisms of his nervous energy walking around being this and that, they, they were like, that's him, that's him. So I could pick up mannerisms and personalities. <laughs> On you know, what's really funny is my middle son, he does exactly what you just described. If he's on a phone call or he's th he paces back and forth. And sometimes I thought, you're driving me crazy. Sit down. He can't. He's like, you know, I don't know, like the thinking mechanism works better with a walking well, thing engaged. I don't know. Funniest thing for me is when I give readings, normally if I'm on a Zoom call, I can't go walk around. So I'll be right, yeah. <laughs> but when I do the phone readings, I, I, I will have that situation when they're a pacer and they walk on the phone and they're pacing. I start doing the same during the reading. It's so interesting how that happens. I know how those things bleed over, which is so intimate about that person. Yes. You see what I'm saying? That that's something about them that that usually validates it a lot for for the person. Um, and have you ever had somebody uh, come through? Like, because 
In other words, let's say somebody wants a reading with this specific person, but somebody else comes through because they want to talk to your well, client. You know, they course. want to elbow the other person out of the way. I tell people all the time, don't predict, even though readings happen, you can't predict if, especially for mediumship, you can't mm -hmm. predict you're going to get so-and-so at so-and-so time at that moment when you're in front of them. Because with readings, it's whatever the spirit world wants to relay and it's what the universe wants to relay. So sure. there's, there's messages that come through that people don't necessarily anticipate. Mm -hmm. And I will tell people, if you're going to come for a mediumship reading, just keep an open mind because you're the receiver. I'm just an instrument, right? And the spirit is the one that's sharing the message. So it's a three-way communication that has to happen. And you can't come in with just uh, one paradigm and not expect it to be different than what it might be. Right, right. And, and, and sometimes people don't realize that perhaps this other spirit may want to, maybe that it's the right time for them to talk to that client and they don't care. And, they, and you're there, like, like you said, being the instrument and they're like, I don't care if they came to talk to so and so. I'm gonna get my two cents worth in because, you know, whatever it well, is. I will give you a flip story, a okay. flip side of it. I had a client a couple years ago because I've only been doing this professionally for four years. But I had a client a couple years ago come with their mother and daughter team. Okay. <laughs> I call it because I had previously read for the daughter, but then the mother and daughter came and wanted it on a specific Sunday in August. So let's okay. say it's three years ago now. So I meet them at my law office after hours and I have a reading with both mother and daughter. Well, as I'm reading, I figured out that they did that date and time because that's the 30th anniversary of when the husband and father killed himself. And so they wanted to know specifically during that reading, and it was supposed to be an hour, why did you kill yourself? Why did you do this? Why did you I do take it? He didn't leave a note, huh? He, he didn't leave a note, but guess what? He came through and wanted to ask for forgiveness. He, they okay. both validate. In fact, they know it was him because the stuff he came up with only they know. But they started yelling and screaming, and it was not the way a normal reading goes. So I stopped the reading 10 minutes out, and I said, listen, you guys need to go to a counselor before you come to someone like me. Because if you're coming to a medium, and you're going to start yelling at me as if I'm the person that you're wanting to talk with. But, 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 and how long had it been? 10 minutes. Oh, 30 years. 30, 30, the 30 years? year anniversary to the date and time he was but dead. But you mean 30 years? I mean, don't get me wrong. I understand that if maybe they didn't, but 30 years is a long time to be I know it is. In. Well, first off, the daughter was like 30 and a half. So she was like a baby when he died. Right. Okay. The mother, the mother was just angry and hostile towards me. And I was like, this isn't going to go. But, but why would they, were they mad at him? Yeah. They're mad because because of I guess they wanted to talk to him, but when he came through and they started realizing, especially the mother, when she realized her husband was coming through all the emotions of what happened when he died and okay. you know, he left her with the baby and Okay. A hard life. And I understand it, but keep in mind, I'm only a medium. I'm not. I was blindsided by that, and that's like one of the stories I tell people not to do with a psychic medium. Don't blindside your medium. Right. Of course not. But yeah, they sound like they had issues, and probably sure. the daughter got them from the mom, and who knows? Yeah, that that must have been a tough call. But thirty is just a long time not to make peace with something as much as as important as you that. can make with that. And he's coming through, and you know what he's saying? Please forgive me. I love you both. Please forgive me. I suffered from severe mental depression. I, I was okay. a combat veteran. I had all this PTSD back then. I'm sorry. And she wouldn't accept right. it. She wouldn't accept the apology. She right, wouldn't no. accept the forgiveness. It happens when anyone's ready, but that was shocking to me personally. Yeah. And sometimes, you know what? I, I think also sometimes when people go to get a reading and they want, let's say, like you said, a specific person, Sometimes that spirit might not be ready to communicate either. It's like a two-way street. You know, they almost get, they expect that that spirit or whoever it is that they want to is going to be available or wanting it. But they might not be for a lot of reasons. They might be working out their own things yes. over there. You're right about that. And I'll say this. It's not like it's a cell phone. <laughs> Psychics no, are AT and T. Sometimes I feel like I am in a way as a joke. I'm like, sure, but we do sweet, but it's 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 a creative process, and there's interpretation involved, and it's it, you know it's like for me when I do mediumship, I tell people it's like charades. I have to interpret what's being shared, and then you right. have to interpret what I'm interpreting. So it's like there's room for error. So you got to make sure you're you're focused, and that you're responsive to when you do have spirit coming through. Yeah, and and, and believe it or not. I wouldn't be surprised if that, that example that you gave, who <laughs> knows if prior to you, they had probably gone to other psychics and he didn't show up thinking, oh no, <laughs> they're going, they're too mad still. 
In other words, that was, that was a tense one for me. Out of the thousands of readings I've probably done in the last four years, I'll have to say maybe average about that. You were like, oh, okay, no, 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 no. I was okay. like, oh, next time they call, I have to remember who they are. <laughs> exactly right. Like and the, and, you know, before we start, <laughs> some people, yeah, it's um, it's like. <laughs> Let me say the mean thing. No wonder the guy committed suicide. I'm only kidding. But not really. But you know what I'm saying? It's like, if this is like, okay, like, lady, do you hold grudges or what? I mean, that's a, uh, that's a, uh, but yeah. Let's just say I, the I, energy, the energy needed to be grounded. Let's, let's just say it nicely like that. Their energy needed to be grounded and it wasn't right. grounded when they came to see me. But yeah. And it's almost like you said, sometimes it's like, how much did you love this person? Or are you more mad because maybe he did leave you? with all these responsibilities, maybe left you, you know, high and dry. And it was a difficult, you know, besides emotional and economic, it was tragedy. difficult for you. Suicide's a tragedy in all its forms. And yes. I feel horrible for yes. what happened. Yes. It's, it's, uh, it's across the board, but, uh, yeah, that's, it. and I'm glad you bring that up, Jason, because a lot of people that sometimes look or consider doing psychic work, if they have that, that ability, they kind of sometimes don't realize that not that, that there's a downside, but you got to be prepared to do readings where things can go sideways. I will, I'll say this to you. I'll say this to you right now. I'm at the pinnacle right now for my psychic business where I have a lot of podcasting I'm doing my uh -huh. lawyering during the day. And then I have readings. So it's like, to, like I had to figure out how to do my schedule where I, I can't just switch hats from lawyer, podcaster, and psychic in an hour. I did that last week once and it was dizzying for me. Like I was making some business calls for my law firm and I look at my calendar. Oh, it's six o'clock. I have an episode to do an interview for. Oh, it's seven o'clock. I got a reading. And I literally did that and I was exhausted. So I, I paced it. So now my schedule, the way it works, I'll do readings one night, but I'll have like three or four readings in a night and then I have interviews. So I've been pacing myself, but right. to do all that like that, it takes a lot to be able to, and, and, and you know this, anyone who schedules a reading, you got to be at your best. If I'm having yes. an off day, I'll usually cancel a, a reading because I don't yes. want to read for anyone unless I'm in my, my best. Yes. And how about, have you ever gotten, let's say for example, you've got a reading the next day. Have you ever gotten any visitations from the day before from or that I you have I have some interesting stories that are on point with that but not necessarily where I read for somebody okay. I had a situation where I met somebody okay. and we wound up becoming friends and this person's aunt attached to me and communicates with me I would say in dreams I don't I've never met okay. this person but I'll say that it's interesting sometimes the spirit world tries to bring people together even if they're just friends like there's things that happen with people's relatives that I'll pick up on and then I'll bring it up to the person who's, you know, alive that's left behind. Right. And a lot of the times I bring up the details and they're like, well, why are they telling you that? Why is my aunt telling you that? Or why is my grandmother speaking to you about a Christmas ornament that I've misplaced last year? And I always tell people the things I get and the information that comes through is meant to be shared because the spirit that comes through is it finds it important to them. And I always honor that. I always look at that. And, and basically, um, I will honor when people come through and share their information. I'll relay it to the loved one because I feel like even if it's a small message, no message is small. They took the energy to relay it across right. from where they are to where we are to me, to them, you know, to the recipient. So there's always a reason. Exactly. Right. And, and, and when we spoke the last time, you mentioned that you also have done readings on what are called are cold cases. Yes. Right where you're getting, well, I imagine, let me ask you something because we were talking about this the last time, the, the people that, how can I say it? It's suspected that they're dead. You yeah, see what I'm saying? It's hard. It's hard. Um, I'll, I'll give you a, a, a really strong example. When I first started out okay. my mediumship abilities, Stacy Peterson is one of the people who disappeared in, I think it's Illinois. Her husband killed her after killing a prior wife. There's a, yes, I know. Her. I know exactly so, which one you're Yes. I'm in Mississippi and I'm working on Hurricane Katrina cases and I'm writing an email to one of my old law partners at the time. And as okay. I'm writing the email, there's a TV program on in the background talking about her disappearance at the time. And as I'm writing my email, the email is from her now. She, she intercedes in my email, interrupts it, and I start writing about her. And I wrote, I think it was like four long transcriptions of information she relayed to me. And the basic substance of what she had to say was, he took me, he hit, him, he hit me in the head, he took my body and he buried it under the gymnasium of the elementary school a few blocks from my house. 
And I didn't know any of that. So I, I you know, I okay. share it with my brother. My brother Googles it. He finds out there's an elementary school where they put an additional place. Because what she told me was that he put her under the addition. They built an addition to the gym. And he okay. put her under the foundation before they laid the concrete. And I, so anyway, I have these emails that I typed up and then I re, re, reformatted them. And then I sent them to the Illinois State Police right after it happened in 2008. Never heard from them. My point in sharing that is I had another case with Jennifer Kessie in 2017 with my best friend, Megan, who's very intuitive and very into cold cases. And she and I worked on this thing for a good year and a half. And we submitted our documentation to the Orlando police. Mm -hmm. And once again, we never heard anything. And I'm okay with that. I relay the information I get on certain cold cases when they come through very strong. Jennifer Kessie came through very strong and that information's on my YouTube channel. And then the Stacey Peterson one, this is the first time I'm bringing that up since 2008. I have never gone public about it. Well, I, the, need I remember that that case, the problem they were having is that they couldn't find her body. Her body is in between the plumbing pipes of the elementary school underneath the macadam, which is where the gym is, because she told me and last year, she told me that uh, she hears sneakers like basketball sneakers and, and flushing of toilets. Okay. So I, I believe that she's buried in the pipes, in between the pipes somehow. Do you yeah. remember that that case at the beginning? They yeah. believed it was him. It is him. But they couldn't. You remember at the very beginning of the case? You can't find the body. Yeah. They I couldn't know. find. They couldn't find her. It was like, is she really dead, or did she? She's leave? really you dead. Know? My feeling is she's dead. He hit her over the head with a blunt object. He put her body and wrapped it in a carpet, and then drove her in the middle of the night to the elementary school where the construction site was. Put her body there, wrapped it. He and probably it. scoped it out and knew. Oh yeah, he's a police officer. Right? He was a police officer. You know, he knows yeah. how to do that stuff. And he already had a wife that died, a prior wife, white or something. He had a, another. People are wife. evil. They're evil. <laughs> No, yeah, no, the guy was bad. And it's like, yeah. And I I have heard of for some reason the smart ones, because they're not as smart despite what we think. A lot of these uh psychopaths, they do look for places like that where there's construction to uh to dispose of bodies because how are they gonna like dig it said, up? Right? <laughs> who's gonna tear up? Who's Who's, you know, sometimes you know how they find remains, somebody stumbles on it, a hunter, you know, somebody mowing grass. But let's face it, you don't have to worry about it if this person is buried in the foundation of a building. It's like, as you're, you're off the hook, you know, what is it? Yeah, I mean, there's ways they could go about it. They do GPR or they, they like an MRA type of device where they do radar, ground penetrating radar over the structure. Right. But the honesty is when you're looking at pipes and you're looking at those kind of things, and this has yeah. been over 11 years. Yeah. It's like it's 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 much more difficult than um, because sometimes you know they dump these bodies and then years afterwards somebody actually stumbles across what was left of this person and um, it's so tragic. Well, um, I mean, tell you sometimes uh, as cold blooded as it is, it and and I'm gonna I'm gonna say that there's people that you think it makes you wonder how long for, and I'm, we'll, we'll, we'll use the example of Stacey. How long was she married to this guy before she started to realize? Oh uh, yeah. I'm not sure. I'll top my what head. She had on her hands. Like how do you get away from somebody that I you think, realize? Oh my God. I think with her, if I recall correctly, it's been a number of years. I think she was younger than him. And I feel like there was yes. an imbalance in the relationship because of the sure. age difference. Mm -hmm. So I think he purposely found the type of person that he could use his, you know, manipulative abilities on it's tragic. It really is right that it's like I, I've got the upper hand here across the board. Yeah, they they Absolutely. do do that. They do do that. And um, but he went. What was he finally convicted of? I think wasn't it the, the murder of the first wife? I believe of the first wife. Right. I knew that there was something there. Yeah. Well, because they, he had gotten away with it, and I think that they started. They went and they started. I don't know if they re reopened the case, but I remember that. But uh, and you hear, you know, sometimes when you see these crime shows, <sighs> it's almost like they become overconfident, especially those things where they do away with a spouse, because then they you realize, hey, this is not the first time that they get rid of somebody and they got away with it the first time. And they 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 keep I can do this again. You and know, then they they get Sorry, overconfident and greedy. You know, there's one I had a recent interview um, with the son of a. Of his father killed his mother and killed his stepmother. <laughs> Horrible story. And oh, one of the things I picked up from it, Todd Bozowski, Bozowski, Bozkowski, sorry, I said it right. He, um, he showed me the human side of this. When you deal with the tragedy and the family's left behind, mm -hmm. like the son of a, of a parent that kills a parent or, uh, right. you know, it's, 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 
it's a lot. It's a lot yes. to think about. We don't think of that. And, and he was telling me about true crime stories. They did a documentary for him. And the people who were doing the documentary had insensitivity towards his personal emotions of what he went through as a child with the death of his mom and stepmom. And I just find that the sensationalism with that and true crime stuff, they need to like really take into account the human side of these things. Oh, sure. And, and do it in a way where they, they, they portray it right. I just, that turned my stomach when I heard that the other day. I was like, wow. So you're telling me it basically. It, yeah, they uh, they they realize that as horrible as the crime in as far as the victims, let's say the victims, as in the ones that were killed, there's other victims as well, which are the ones that are left behind, which are alive. Those are victims as well. Exactly. It's just not the ones that get killed. As a matter of fact, I had my daughter when she was a teenager. She had a girlfriend, a little, you know, they were good friends. This girl was over at my house. Only child. Her dad was a corrections officer, and you know. Her parents, everything fine. And I remember her telling me, you know, so-and-so, um, her parents are really strict, especially her dad. And her dad's really mean sometimes because he doesn't like let her and her mom do anything. Make a long story short. I can't remember exactly what the triggering event was, but he ended up killing her mom and himself. Okay. But, you know, all the signs were there as far as the personality and all that, you know, that control. I think you just never think it's going to happen to you. Right. Right. Because most of exactly us are insulated from that in our minds. We don't think that kind mm -hmm. of tragedy could take place with someone that we know, someone close to us that's going to flip yes. and, and, and commit homicide. Yes, exactly. And that was the, um, and like I said, because they, by the time he did that, my, the, my daughter and her had drifted off a little bit. And I don't know exactly because, you know, sometimes it's a, an event that triggers them to do that, whether it's the, the other person wants to leave the marriage or, I mean, there's a bunch of different reasons uh, why that happens. <laughs> yeah, they, they, you know, it's divorced. like, you, <laughs> you don't, don't want to be with me. Well, possible. nobody's not, you're not going to, I'm not going to let you be happy and, you know, and live your life without me being, you know, making your life a living hell. So yes, it's, it's uh, what they call, well, not, well, family annihilators, they usually take out as, you know, even the children, but, um, Yes, there is there is a there is something to um, and sometimes it's it's really weird exactly what goes on in the minds of some of these people. Oh yeah, um, you know that they see basically another person as property, and I know people have a hard time, you know, conceiving of that, but that's it's really unhealthy. how they see it. Well, it's an unhealthy model, and people who are not properly balanced then yes. try to you know do that it's not right well you know what it's also that you know i mean they, they there's a lot of manipulation and stuff like that but yeah they there there's a lot of that um that goes on and look you know sometimes it ends bad and sometimes it ends good and you know um a lot of the work that i did once upon a time when i had i did i worked with a lot of victims of domestic violence wow and uh that's why i understand and I mean, I saw that a lot as far as the manipulation and intimidation and things like that and um, the psychological aspect of it. And mm -hmm. even including what you just talked about, the threats of I'm going to do this. And a lot of them don't ever think that that person is going to actually do it. You it's see what like, I'm saying? Yeah, it's like it's like you just don't anticipate that that's going to be the way that this is going to wind up. Right. You know, even as, I mean, as, bad, as bad as that person has behaved, you never think that that person is actually going to commit an atrocity of, of, you know, killing the person. But yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's really, it's, it's, it, that's a whole, it's very dark. Um, but I agree with you. A lot of the, the, the crime shows, sometimes they forget that the people that are left behind and, and then, and I don't, I, if there's people out there, I know they make peace with it, but I don't think that's ever something you get over. Correct. You see what I'm saying for the rest never of your life. Let go of that. Negative. I mean, you'll be able to let go of the negativity, but you'll never forget the pain you went through. Right. Exactly. And it's a life changing exactly. experience. I'm sure it's going to change the way you connect with people after. Sure. That. Of course it does. Of course it does. It's traumatic. I mean, the, you could just see the trauma that would be created for somebody yes. to have that happen in their yes. life and survive that. Yes. And um, I'll tell you this much: when something like that, when a person experiences that, regardless of what age they are, but especially if you're younger, you have this, this, you know, that like what you just described where people live in this, uh, you have this reality where bad things like that can't happen. Once that happens to you in your life, 
you let go of that you because you know something like this can happen exactly and then it's hard for you to trust and be vulnerable to people again sure 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 absolutely uh let me ask you have you ever and i'm gonna say because i know and i'm not gonna mention shows but have you ever been walking around and felt compelled to give somebody information from a departed one yes and let's hear it and have you acted on it or have you been like ah, I, I, did, can't. I did i did i did um it, it was one of the t i'll give you an example i was on an airplane flying around i used to be a jet setter back in the day flying between tampa texas and new jersey and a few other places and um I remember I was like, at this point, I know I'm a psychic medium, but I'm still in the psychic closet. I'm not open about it. Right. It's just something I'm aware of. You know, you go through that stage. And so I'm sitting on this plane with my lawyer hat on and uh -huh. I'm sitting there and the woman next to me where I had to fly from New Jersey, I'm sorry, from Florida with a layover in Charlotte for an hour and then fly up to New Jersey for Sandy case, super from Sandy. And I'm sitting there and I'm sitting next to this woman and she's so soft spoken and she's dressed well. And. I picked up on her daughter and her daughter kept telling me we're like 32,000 feet in the air. We just ascended, you know, you could take your seatbelt off at this time. Right. And I'm 32,000 feet in the air and I'm, and the daughter's coming through to tell me my mom, you need to tell my mom that when she goes to the house to let her keep the picture that has to do with the seascape. And I'm like, I have no idea what this is. I have no idea. What this is. And for the first 45 minutes, I didn't say a word. Finally, we're starting to go like descend. And as I'm sitting there, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to do this. She's loud to me. I better respect her wishes. I mean, the daughter. And I looked at the mother right. and I said, very casually, nonchalant, I said, oh, North Carolina is a beautiful place. I go, I went there for a wedding last year on the beach because I knew when she said seascape, there might be something. If I brought up something, it might trigger her. Right. Mother. So when I said beach, the mother goes, oh, yes, I live in North Carolina. There's a summer house I'm going to look at. We're selling it and I'm going to gather my things. My daughter just died of cancer. And I was like, oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. And she's like, yeah, my daughter actually went there a year ago when she went through her divorce. I told her stay at the beach house. So my daughter went to the beach house and she spent two weeks there. And when I got there, she painted these lovely seascape pictures, of, like like landscape. Oh my God. Beach. And I sit there and I said, seascape? She goes, excuse me? I said, uh, I bet you anything, from what you're describing, your daughter would probably want you to keep those pictures, those paintings. And she said, seascape, huh? I said, yeah. And, and she's like, my daughter painted a painting and called it Seascape. And I said, well, I'm a psychic medium. I'm also a lawyer. I'm not trying to shock you here, but your Bye. daughter wants me to tell you to keep the painting. And she said, she started tearing up and she goes, that painting helped get her through her crisis with her divorce. That painting wow. she said, she spent a, a couple of days of her trip rem reminiscing and, and creating and sitting on the beach and she goes, when you look at it, it looks like a basic photo, but it's beautiful to me because my daughter painted it. She had artistic abilities. Anyway, a couple of weeks later, I get an email with a screenshot, a picture from her, uh, back then the cell phone was like, of the uh -huh. seascape and the mother thanking me that she took the seascape back with her back to, back to I think it was Clearwater. There you go. Wow. There's an example, but there's thousands of those kind of examples that happen. When I'm in a, you Uber, know what? I could see the, 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 the position that you're in at the same time it's like what if i tell this to this woman and she doesn't you know you never know how people are going to react the fear, was, the fear was what if i tell this woman thirty-two thousand feet in the air about her daughter and what if she has like a hyper sensitive breakdown and i'm being i'm going like, to be oh, on she... cnn for a moment of this guy upsetting this mother grieving about her daughter yeah luckily exactly. it didn't happen like that and my right. and my spirit guides led me in the right direction but you're right there's a responsibility as a psychic you've got to know when to say something to somebody at the right moment and interpret yes. that yes and you know what it's really funny because the daughter probably said this is my opportunity to get this message to my mom and you know i it, it makes me wonder how much do these spirits have to influence that certain people end up sitting to next to other people well can i give you another example okay so that aunt that i talk about I was right. at the casino with my mom on July 4th and I was gambling with my mom. First time we went to the casino since COVID. Okay. And I'm gambling and I think to myself, oh, I wonder how this person's doing, the person I'm thinking about. Right. As soon as I thought that, the casino announces that person as the winner of the $700 bonus prize for that hour. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and I'm like, are you kidding me right now? I didn't walk up to the person because I, I couldn't find them in the casino. But my point is there's uh -huh. so much synchronicity that happens with the spirit world where they create these 
not coincidences. They create these moments for us to reflect, pause, and appreciate what they can do on the other side. And I believe that we do have spiritual protection and spiritual work from the other side, and they make it known. And you will sense that when you can see it and, and be aware of it. Well, you know what? It's it's almost, and the reason why I said it is, I'm thinking to myself that, that the story that you said about this lady <laughs> who's going to this cottage which she's selling which means probably after that trip she wasn't going to probably return correct okay and here who ends up sitting next to her you Me. not Me. just you a person that can actually be able Help to her. listen to her daughter and impart this message i believe okay. heavily i believe in synchronicity more than any other life force yes. in existence Synchronicity yes. happens every minute of my life. I believe you and I met through synchronicity. Yes. I believe when people, I have people call me for readings and they will talk or they will ask me life issues that are exactly on point with something I either went through earlier in the year or something I have some deep wisdom about. And mm -hmm. I gain wisdom when I give readings to people. There are things I struggle with in my life privately. And then the next thing you know, I'm reading three people with the same issue. When I had cancer, I had multiple people come to me with cancer diagnosis issues, diagnosis issues while I was uh -huh. going through it. And it helped me. There, me giving them the reading information I was reading for them and providing the reassurance right. and clarity guided me. Because while I said, so you know what? There's um there's a uh, God, what's her name? She's a medical intuitive. Right. She used to listen to her a lot. What was her name? God almighty. Oh she's a doctor. As a matter of fact, she's a PhD and a doctor of psychiatry. Wow. Oh, Marlene. God, she's she's very well known. She's been around for a really long time. But anyway, and her name will come to me in a moment. No worries. And um, she, say, she would say, you know, I would listen to a lot of the podcasts she was on where she would say, I always pay attention to things that are going on around me. But she, you know, not even so, even outside of a reading, as in if I see something or certain things like, in other words, she's saying basically that the world around you is basically trying to talk to you all the time. Always. Through through symbols. That's secret. I mean, that's 100%. That's through something like, um, she was one time, uh, what was it that she was saying? Um Like, in other words, what you have to learn, in other words, if you, if you look at it, just look at it. It's, it seems like an ordinary thing. But if you try, if you look at it through the eyes of, okay, I'm seeing this I can for some reason or something is trying. It doesn't have to be earth stopping either. It's not like, oh, I, you know, um, you're going to get this profound message. I got an example to tell you. And Go ahead. During the pandemic, you know, we were all struggling. And I went through some depression moments, mental health awareness, uh -huh. you know. And I remember it was a Thursday uh, several months ago, probably last year. And my grandfather came to me in the morning of that day and he said to me, you're going to get some signs today that are going to give you some messages. So pay attention. You're not, okay. you're not, you're not down and out. You're not, you're not failing. You're not going to fall apart. So literally I was like, well, what sign am I going to get? What sign? And it's very subtle, right? So I'm sitting right. there and I'm doing my daily deeds. And all of a sudden I get a call about a new referral for my law firm. And I was like, okay, cool. A new referral, a new case, right? Okay. Then I got 10 minutes later, I got contacted about a prospective guest for my show. Right. Okay. And then the third one was 10 minutes, exactly 10 minutes apart within a half hour. These three things happen. The next thing was I got, a, I got a, a request for a new reading for being a psychic. And I sat back for a second and I'm like, grandpa, thank you. He basically told me, you're going to have three signs that show you synchronicity to let okay. you know you're not failing. You're not down and out. So I got new business in all three areas of my life at that time within a half hour when he told me several hours earlier when I woke up. Pay attention today. There are signs that are going to show you that you're not down and out and things are going up. And he was right. And see, and this is the kind of thing that because sometimes, and believe me, because I consider myself a subconscious behaviorist and I know the powers of the subconscious mind. Oh, yeah. But these are things that you couldn't, because sometimes we act on subconscious information and it might look happenstance, but in reality, it's because we know it. But when it's something that comes to you or happens to you, there's it's no way it's your subconscious mind. You know about angel numbers, right? Yes. So I'll give you one last example. Go uh, ahead, go ahead. So about a year ago in January of last year, 2020, before COVID happened, I was at a crossroads with my law firm and I was debating if I should fight one of my former business associates to try to get fees on a case that I knew I was entitled to or if I just let go of it. It was a substantial recovery. 
or if I should let, let go of it and pursue new things. And I kept getting this nudging feeling for like two weeks, let go of it, pursue new things, let go of it, pursue new things. But I didn't act on it. So then I finally decided to go to sleep because something was picking up like negativity from my old business partner picked up and it was, it was heating up. So I had to make that decision, like get off the fence, make your decision, hire a lawyer, fight him for the money, or just say, go enjoy yourself and I'm gonna do my thing. Right. I fell asleep, I prayed, and I said, give me guidance, Grandpa. Give me guidance, God. Give me guidance, universe. I fall asleep. I wake up at 5.55 a.m. Now, I have two parrots. My one parrot made a really weird noise at 5.54 a.m. when I got up. And by the time I went over to check on her, my alarm was set for 6 a.m. because I had to okay. drive to the other side of Florida to do a deposition. So I, I got woken up five, six minutes early before I had to get up anyway. And I uh -huh. go to check my bird because she made a really weird screeching sound. I jumped up to go check on her. And I walked over to her cage and I noticed she was still sleeping. I'm like, wait, what is this? And then I looked down at my alarm clock and it was five, 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 right? Uh -huh. So I'm like, okay, that's interesting. So then I go downstairs to the dryer in the garage to get my clothes out for work for that day. And as I did, I said, grandpa, I'm going down the steps. Five, 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 I looked it up. It means don't let go, let go of the past, have faith in the future that new things will come, new opportunities, new door, whatever. So I got that message. Then I go down the steps and I said, grandpa, is that what you really think I should do? I'll follow your guidance. And he always left me pennies. He still does. He always leaves me pennies okay. around. When he was alive, he had a lot of money, but he acted like he didn't because of the depression era type thing. Right. And he had hundreds of pennies that he would carry around and jostle in his pocket. Okay. So anyway, my family knows that my grandfather sends us messages. There's a penny associated to it. And then you know, for a definitive exclamation point, he's telling you, go with the flow, do what you got to, you know, do what you're feeling. I went down to the washing machine and a year and a half earlier, I seized the engine of a prior washing machine because I left change in my wallet, in my pocket. So I don't leave any change in my pockets anymore. In fact, I have a sign in my garage next to the washing machine that says, check your pockets. A right. friend made that for me. Uh -huh. So I go down and get my clothes out of the washer, put it in a dryer, and there's no, there's no middle thing there in my washer because it's a right. new washing machine. And there's a penny heads up right and in the middle. Like I'm like, I know for a fact I have to let go of the old. Let right. the new flow and go for it. And you know what? That was the best decision I made. It was right before COVID happened. I didn't have to pay money to hire a lawyer, fight a battle that I didn't need to fight. Right. I let go of it. I surrendered to it. And, and now I have had many opportunities because of the new energy. There you go. And But see, the thing is, that happens to people more often than they think, but they're not paying attention. You see what I'm saying? Or they feel like, oh, you know, it's just like, it could be that simple. <laughs> And sometimes it is if you if you're really listening to what it doesn't matter. And I remember now the name of that. Uh, her name is Dr. Mona Lisa Schultz. OK. And um, she's uh, last time I checked, I think she was living up in Maine, but she does podcast and she's a medical intuitive. Very good one. Oh, wow. And I personally have had a reading with her. And um, it's really funny because she was she, she will even talk about um when she was working in the hospital and things like that, uh, how she says that she had certain nurses that she says, I knew that they were psychic because when these nurses told me something about a patient, like, oh, I got to keep an eye on so-and-so. And even though they're medically, their condition hadn't changed. There was nothing to say, okay, well, this, she says, I knew it. She says, they were, there were a couple of them that I knew that when they mentioned something to me when I was doing my rounds, sure enough, this person was getting ready to pass away. Wow. And, you know, these, and, and it's almost like what you want to call unofficial psychics. Of course. You know, yeah. because these nurses are just doing it as part of their job. And um, she was asking, well, in, is there something wrong? Is something going on with their condition or what, what, what made you say, no, you know, but you need to keep an eye on so and so. And she, she says after a while, she says, oh, okay, she would she would pay attention to what they were saying because of that. Um, and then she she also goes on, in, in, you know, in her personal life, how she says, I pay attention to synchronicity, but there's other things around you that sometimes you have to interpret because it has, usually it relates to what's going on for you in your life at that moment that exactly. you might be thinking about. And that yeah. all of a sudden you look at it and if you look at it from the, from the point of view of either have a question or I'm wondering or I'm worried. All of a sudden you look at it and it's like it's trying to tell you something. Absolutely. You know, symbolism, things of that nature. But and, and, and I'll, I'll say that's this, a great story though about your grandfather with the pennies though. 
Thank you. Uh, it happens all the time. In fact, I'll take pictures of it. Another example, I, I was deciding whether or not I should move to a larger office space or stay in my current office space. And I was kind of on the fence about it. And I went downstairs to get a drink and there was a penny right by my tire of my car. And I was like, okay, grandpa, I'll get the larger space. And then I downsized a year later, right before COVID happened a few months before I was debating uh, a lot smaller space opened up and I'm like, should I go down to the smaller space? And the same right. thing happened. Another penny appeared. I went down for the smaller space. Next thing you know, COVID happened. And I made a, and good like, Whoa. Decision. a really good financial decision. Isn't that, it's incredible. It's powerful. Sometimes that, um, it's yeah, super people powerful. don't realize that you, you know, but, and I'm going to say also, sometimes people have flashes of intuition and, um, sometimes they make the wrong decisions or what they think is the wrong decision. It's but true. they, you know, you know how somebody, everybody always goes down the what if tunnel. What if I didn't do that? Or what, what if, if I didn't say that? Plague our you minds. Always and I think, tell people always ignore those what if thoughts. They're not going to help. Well, you. everybody always assumes that if you would have done something different, it would have been a better outcome. And that might not be the case. Exactly. You could say, oh, if I would have done or said that, or if I would have married, so, so you know, whatever, whatever the things be. And you're always assuming that grass is greener on the other side. And that's no guarantee on that. I'm telling you, there not. isn't. It's not usually. Sometimes, yeah, but I mean, life would be boring if there was. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna date myself. There was, uh, you know how there's certain Twilight Zone. I used to love those shows that were very popular. You know, like the one with William Shatner and all that stuff. There was one where it's uh he's a he's a thief, and he ends up in this place. And for um, and it's like a pool hall, like a place. And he's just he, he there's a there's a a guy that comes up to him dressed like a butler kind of and says, whatever you want, whatever you need, what whatever. So he's like all these beautiful women, drinks. He has he can play pool. He's like, but when he's there, you know, all the women want to be with him. He never loses in a pool game. There's nothing there. In other words, so after a while, because he got and, and and the thing is, in his mind, he was he was robbing some place. He gets shot at, and so he thinks he died and he's gone to heaven. And so after a while, he comes back to the guy who greeted him, and he goes, "Hey, you know, um, I thought this was uh, you know be, heaven being heaven, supposed to yeah, it's great. It, you know, I get everything I want and the women, <laughs> and this is like my dream. But yeah, I'm not really happy. And the man turns around and says but who said this was heaven? <laughs> in other words, there was a torment in getting everything you want with no challenge. In other words, and my point being that sometimes when things don't go your way or that you said, or you, or people don't forgive themselves for making the wrong decision, it's like, well, but maybe sometimes it's because that's part of what needs to happen to you in your life. Learning experiences. Okay. Because if everything went your way after a while, believe it or not, like you'd be like, okay, well, what do I try hard for? I know I'm going to do great. I had no a challenge. You're right about that, and and it's and it's it's all about the life experience and how you how you view it, right? How you perceive what happens to you. Some people could have a really hard time accepting a difficult situation and learn how to mm -hmm. expand beyond it, where other people get stuck in it, hung on it. Sure. Other, there, yeah, people who can really, I think that's one of the variables in life that we all realize exists, but we don't want to accept is the change of life. Oh, well, yeah. And anybody that's talked to older people, regardless of, you know, whether what kind of person they are, but they kind of almost consistently, I tell people, whenever you talk to older people, when I mean older, like octogenarians, you know, wow. late in life, they, the most regrets they usually have is about not having done certain things, sure. like being scared of it or, you know, the it's embarrassing or, or I, you know, but people are going to, they get so, and they, and they, they'll tell you that if I would have known, I would have just done it, you know, whatever, exactly. if it came out great and if not, well, whatever, but I regret more not having done it. Well, and that's the bucket list aspect, right? To make sure you yes. live with your best form and your best. I think one of the things with the pandemic that really upset a lot of people was that they got robbed of a year of their life where they didn't oh, get yes. to do a lot of their dreams. And then, you know, people are dying from certain things. And, and it's, it's, you know, so it's like, I feel like what you can do with that is try to like live the best version of yourself every day. Even if you're in your house and you're not going anywhere, there are things you can do that elevate your vibrations, elevate your mood to keep you at the best optimal part for yourself.
Sure, sure. I mean, my granddaughter, she went through her whole junior year of high school, which I said, mm. that guy wasn't your senior year because that supposedly is your great oh, year. All the landmark moments, right? You know, and Common. she was like, she was like tied in front of the computer because she did all her, her junior year basically. And the only thing is, you know, and she was on the track team. And I mean, it, it just like high school wise. <laughs> it killed but, it. Yes. It, and now she's all happy. As a matter of fact, she's spending some time here with me. Um, right. She's ready to go, and uh, and I'm trying to talk her into attending a university, University of South Florida, Very which nice. is close to me. I'm trying to like get her like, you don't have to pay for a dorm, yes. you know, because I have a cottage here on the grounds. You know, I'm trying to like. She's my only granddaughter. That'd be but, amazing uh, if you could get her to stay local. Oh yeah, yeah, and then and I go. Well, what do you want to do, Elizabeth? She wants to become a geologist. Nice. <laughs> Of all things, but yeah, so um, yeah, it, it, it's it's stuff like that that, um, and you know, uh, a lot of times, um, you know, and I, I don't know if you've come across this, Jason, when you do psychic readings, uh, especially when people come to you because obviously because maybe somebody that was close to them passed away, where they're resistant to the change of mm. that they that they have to. I don't want to say let go because that's a bad word for it but that they have to change in the sense of I might have, I have to live my life now without this person. It's hard. It's a very because hard they thing. want to stay. In other words, they want to do what's impossible, which is have that same life that they had before before. And by this, I'm, I'm going to say, usually if it's an elderly parent, that's different because people are more okay with it in the sense, because that's it more expected. It's when it's either a spouse or maybe or a child or somebody, other family member that people get like, they can't get beyond it. Almost like they feel like if I don't, if I, if I'm not forever mourning, it's like, I'm forgetting this person. Um, you know, that guilt thing that goes on. Oh, yeah. Have you ever run across having readings where the deceased person, the spirit tells them, tell this person that it's okay to yes. keep going. Yes. I had a situation early in my psychic mediumship before I became an open psychic where I had a friend of mine at the time who was grieving her boyfriend who died in a motorcycle accident. Okay. And, and that was about 12 years ago. And I did a lot of readings for her as a friend. Like it was where it actually helped me become a better psychic. So I, I appreciate everything in life. But one of the things that happened, this happened for three years. We got really close. He came through for her, through me to her for thousands of times over like three or four years. Okay. And finally one day he just like told her, you can move forward now. It's time for you to move forward. She had met someone new. She married a person eventually. It turned out to be his elementary friend from high school. Wow. He told, he told her, "You, I'm always with you. I love you and you can move forward. It's okay. And and our, interestingly enough, she she's done that, so. Right, because I know, I wanna say even in, uh, whether it was a romantic, you know, whether like that or whether there was a marriage where it's hard. Um, people feel like, oh, if, if, if I move on, it's like, I know it sounds dramatic. I'm dishonoring the memory of this person or, oh, yeah, I did, you know, they think, well, it's, it's, and it's like, no, um, you're supposed to, you're supposed well, to uh, go on. They living. want the deceased loved one wants the person who's left behind to be with someone new and not to be alone. That's a common theme I get all the time. Yes. All the time. But guilt, guilt, uh, believe it or not, people sometimes guilt, <laughs> guilt is a very different, people don't know I'm going to say this, even though it's good because that means you're not a psychopath, <laughs> but guilt can be very destructive. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, to the human psyche. And it, it, it causes a lot of misery when the people let it get away from, you know, too much guilt. That kind of deal. Absolutely. Um, yes, most certainly. And let me. And so, I want to ask you the obvious. Doesn't haven't you had instances where the psychic bleeds over into your law practice? <laughs> I have developed the best ability possible in my mind. I do this right. right? And I've had clients who are psychic clients because I don't uh -huh. tell the legal clients I'm a psychic. They'd have to figure that out on their own. And I go by a different pseudonym here. My legal okay. name is not Jason Zook, the social psychic. So right. I'm Jason Ciafalo. I'm not hiding who I am. But my point is right. this. I've had um, 
clients who are psychic. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, my psychic clients who I give readings for who get to know me because they're repeats, they're repeaters. Right. Literally call me up and ask me for a legal question. And if it's not something I'm comfortable, I say, look, I'm your psychic. I'm not your lawyer. And I've right. had people on the legal side where they know I'm psychic because I'm more open about because of my show and everything. Mm -hmm. And I've had people ask me, so like, do you ever do this in your, you know, I'm like, no, because you know how I can tell you why it's no, because there's no ethics rules that give me guidance that if I'm a lawyer and I'm a psychic, this is what I should do as a lawyer. So I right. follow that as guidance to say, lawyer, hat, take it off after hours, psychic hat. When I want to do show, podcaster, psychic hat. Lawyer comes in on certain things. Like I just had an amazing guest the other day who was a whistleblower and I was able to talk legal stuff with him. But because right. of the solicitation rules as lawyers and you know you can't solicit people you don't know and you got to be careful what you portray. And so mm -hmm. I, I, I operate and I know it's not a perfect aspect of things because I'm still an open psychic and I do these things, but I operate basically under those parameters that, that for me to do everything I want to do, I have to just switch hats and do it as such. And I guess also, and and I know you're saying that you, and, and it sounds like you have very, you have the ability of getting very good boundaries, but have you ever done anything where that person is negative mm. And you're and you're doing you're you're being an attorney, you know what I'm saying? But you're like, I, I'm exhausted. <laughs> you know? because, the energy. You're talking about clientzillas, I think. You're talking about clients. Hey, oh, we call them clientzillas. <laughs> I love my clients. I love them all. Clientzillas. <laughs> yeah, they're clientzillas. Like like bridezillas. Like they will come at you after you settle a case, and they will be like, ah, and you're like, you're like, okay, uh, yeah, I've I've had that happen. I'm thinking to myself because. I guess because people don't realize, even with a boundary, you know, the stuff people, you, you, how can I say it? Um, Their anxieties come through. Their anxieties uh, right, through. exactly. You're, you're like, like, you know, I'm trying to talk here. We're, this is business, not personal, but God, you're like, oh, you know, it's like, let's make, keep this short. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. No, it's difficult. It's difficult. And I have to just keep those firm boundaries in place. Yeah. It's, um, it's, 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 people don't realize that, they, that, that sometimes you even pick, you, you do it even unconsciously, um, where you, you might not be actually doing it. Um, but it, but it, you know, it comes through sometimes, especially well, when you get somebody that's got one of those either strong personalities or a lot going on there, just like, you know, like, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, like, uh, uh, what was it? The, uh, you know, Bugs Bunny, um, oh, yeah. Yosemite Sam? I, no, the other one, the devil. Um, the Tasmanian I, devil. I was doing yeah, it. Yeah, they're like, yeah. And I was like, and it's like. I just like, summarize it, clientzillas. Like, you know, my psychic clients funny. are my psychic clients and my lawyer clients are my lawyer clients. I don't mix the two. That is funny, clientzillas. <laughs> Next time you have a different client, you'll think that term, I bet you. I know, I know exactly. That's exactly what I'm thinking, that it's it's the kind of thing that you go, yeah, I, yeah. I know. You get uh, on the phone yeah, with them, and they're normal, usually, and then they go zero to 60 in two seconds, like, ah! You're like, whoa, okay, hold on. Yeah. <laughs> Three deep breaths, let's start over. Yes. Yes, and, and you know, um, and I don't know. I don't know if it was with you that we talked about this, or it was another interview that I did. And I'm going to turn this around on the psychic side of this, because a lot of people think sometimes that a psychic uh, should be very uh, in tune, like mm, you know, very put together because you're psychic. And I give the example of um, I don't know if you're familiar with that movie Rose Red that was based on a Stephen King novel, mm. where it's a, an older house and uh, and a college professor, she's trying to prove a theory about basically that it's a sentient household, whatever. Okay. Several tragedies that happened in the house, whatever. But bottom line, she brings in a bunch of, of psychics to go in there. One of the guys is a real jerk, <laughs> but he's one of the most powerful psychics in the group. Okay. And... I tell people, you know that there's a lot of psychics out there that they're very psychic. They're extremely psychic. And they can be very disagreeable people. <laughs> you know, because everybody thinks that because you're yeah. psychic, you got all the answers or that your uh, spiritual life is in tune. Mm -mm. And How that's not the case. Psychics are human beings, right? 
Yes. And there are unethical psychics or there are moody yes. psychics or there are psychics that you don't want to invite to your party. Let's just be be honest right, with you. Right, right. And are you um, them Christmas cards because they're they're not nice people but they're psychic. I've had psychics. Yes, I did like mention that. this to you in the in the we'll in the last. That, it was too. you. It was you that I said, you know, because a lot of people think that oh that person's psychic. Oh they they're great. They're they're normal. They're nice. They're oh they're they you know, and I'm like, no, you know, I've known well, a lot of psychics that it's like. I'm, I'll tell you this, because I get the benefit of being a lawyer and being a psychic. I've seen lawyers who should be put together, right? You go to yes. law school, you put all these things and you accomplish all these things. And some of the craziest people in this world are lawyers. Some of the most yes. screwed up people in this world are lawyers. Some of the people who are imbalanced, they may have a successful law firm, but they're cheating on their wife. They're two kids. Yes. One has bulimia. Yeah, it's just, it's insanity. What yes, you think I know. you would try to project on the people who have certain jobs, but the reality is they're human beings like everyone else. So right, right, because you have a life. behind the scenes, right? Like we think, well, if you see this <laughs> portion of their life, in other words, what's presented to the outside world, they look very put together or successful, like you said. And exactly. then behind the scenes, it's like, Ugh! it's like, all right. I mean, <laughs> one of the things I'm going to be doing for my show is revealing that, you know, professional athletes deal with significant mental health issues. And that's coming with, with you know, with the Olympics, we've seen it and, and, and football yes. and basketball, whatever sport it is. These people are on a pedestal and people think just like we were just talking about this with with psychics or what mm -hmm. everybody's got human stuff that interferes with their lives. Let me ask you compassion about it. that you pointed out. And we're talking here. We're not talking injury related. We're talking yeah. about mental and I'm health. Thinking, is, um, all these, you know, whether it's professional sports or, you know, like the Olympics, I think, and, and it makes you wonder what comes first, the chicken or the egg. Um, is it that pressure that they exist? You know, some of them start, you know, in that sport when they're children, basically. Well, think about it. If you, I don't know any athletes. I've never met any right. athletes, so I don't know anyone personally, but I've seen people on TV and I've watched, like, you know, I've read about different ones and you could right. see there are athletes who are like amazing on the field. But when you look at them personally, if you actually are able to peel back that onion and look at the person, yes. they probably have the incapacity. They're like little children inside. They have the incapacity to connect emotionally with people or have stable relationships. They probably have severe anxiety issues because yes. I was reading an article earlier because I'm trying to prepare for some episodes on this topic because it's passion to me. I'm, I'm really into it. But like these people who perform on the field for football or basketball or whatever it is on the court, they have significant pressure that an average person doesn't, that society doesn't even think about or contemplate that what they go through is so significant that it could cause them to have severe mental health issues. That when they get done with their their, their sport, you know, they, they just collapse, they pass out, they they struggle. Right, and they don't realize, they don't, I'm gonna you know, give you, because people don't realize that, especially, you know, when you reach a certain level, uh, you're basically, your, your, your time is consumed with practice, mm or whatever, and I'm gonna give you an example. When I was doing hypnotherapy, I had a mom bring me her daughter. She was 16, but she had been playing tennis since she was a kid, okay? And you could tell her, she was being groomed to go into you know, professional tennis. This was the, she had been playing, she was a little, little kid. And her mom brought me, brought her in to help me hypnotize her because she had been, losing but over very um things that she supposedly she was a very very good tennis player but she was losing over stupid stuff in other words things and and, and her mom wanted me to hypnotize her so that her to help her with focus is what else can you do with with sports it's basically what it comes down to is focus you know whatever type of sports it is whether you know it's tennis or team sport it's all your focus so I tip the tizer and I'm getting this feeling that basically, and I, I didn't, you know, you don't go into that because, you know, it's not your place. And, but basically this girl really didn't want to become a professional <laughs> tennis player. She didn't. It was her parents. She, right. It was, she, she liked it, but in other words, she, it was like the, she was basically sabotaging herself. Hmm. Okay, because so in other words, this was in other words, this was an easier way for her to get out of that than to say to her mom, "I don't want to do this professionally for the rest of my," you know. 
which is by the way, girl, right? talking I mean, about that, we were talking about the stressors, mental stressors that some of these athletes go through even when they're very young. Of course. You know, a lot of it sometimes has to do with expectations from authority figures, as in your parents, that how do you tell them, no, <laughs> yeah, I don't want to be, um, An and athlete. that they do stuff like that. And, and I worked with her for a while, and then um, I was trying to very gently break it to her mom. It's like, um, she's, you know, she's, I, I think she wants to do it, but you, maybe you, you know, you need to l let her, you know, take up a little bit of the pressure off so that she, the pressure's not helping her. In other words, okay. I was trying to like, you know, by the way, mom, you know, you're not helping any. Oh yeah. And, um, then after a while, I, I, as a matter of fact, I stopped seeing clients under the age of 18, even though her mom was there and she, you know, she signed on a, you know, on a, on a basically a release. Um, but it was like, it was, to me, it was very sad when I was going through that because I could tell that this young girl did not really, this was not what she wanted to do. Uh, but, uh, yeah, the, things like that, um, it, it's, it's unfortunate, but it happens. And, and part of the, how can I say it? That's the, the, I don't think you have to be much of a psychic to pick up on what I did, <laughs> which is, you know. At least you um, but, figured that out for them, though. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it happens, and it is what it is as far as, um, you know, because of, of that, of what you mentioned. But um, anyway, Jason, I, I wanted to – let me ask you. Um, you said that are, are you – you know, you've got the podcast, okay, and you've got the YouTube channel. And what are you doing? Are the podcasts – are you – is it the podcast on YouTube, or is it a separate yeah. – for now, okay. I'll tell For you now. this. I didn't tell you this early in the interview, but I call myself Jason Zook, the social psychic, because I had a premonition dream in 2012 when I was coming back from Texas. Uh -huh. I had a dream that I was in the middle of a green iguana type place, a bar with a lot of woodwork in it, and it was okay. packed with people. And I was like, oh, who's here in my dream? And this woman with these, win uh, she had like dream catcher earrings, feathers. She okay. turned her head and she said, oh, Jason Zook, the social psychic's here. He's filming for a show tonight. And at the time, that's what I did. That was my response in my dream. And then I woke up like, Jason Zook, the social psychics filming for his show tonight. What does that mean? This is before I had a podcast or I was, it's like five years before I became an open psychic. So I adopted the name Jason Zook, the social psychic from my dream, from the premonition, because my grandfather's last name is Zukovich. That's my mom's maiden name. And he's okay. the important figure in my life. So I knew that this name was from a future me kind of thing. It was a premonition dream. Okay. And I since then have been like the YouTube aspect of it is I feel like I'm either going to do something more with my YouTube channel in the future and it'll pick up or okay. I'm going to interview for like a reality show or something on TV someday. So yes. your question about my YouTube was my YouTube is the default for now where I'm okay. using my creative energy to finally start creating things that are, it's easy for me to do the podcasts and upload okay. those video interviews. I, find that it's actually better to have a video version of the interview because your uh -huh. audience can actually see the facial and the, sure. the whole complete picture of the interview. So for yeah. now, my, my channel is basically doing the updated podcast episodes from the last six months. I'm about a month or two behind between the audio it's and the video. It is. Well, it's, I have someone helping me and he's doing an amazing job. And I told him, don't get frustrated or, you know, we'll get them out when they get them out. We're under construction right now. <laughs> and so it's a fun thing though, because I release my audio episodes and then I'll have a few videos I release during the week. So I look like I'm putting out all this content, but it's the same stuff it's that I delayed. Did. It's a delayed. You know, I mean, I've done like 30 episodes in 30 days. I'm not saying I haven't. Oh my that. God. I owe that the podcast. Do you, do you, is there, where, where do you fit time in there to sleep? Um, <laughs> I, I, you know, what's funny. I, something, my spirit guys have just been telling me podcast, 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 do your podcast. And I've been finding these, like you came on my show as an amazing guest. I've been having these amazing guests just come on the show. And I'm like, you know what? The universe is calling me to do this right now for a reason. And I'm following okay. it and I'm doing it as much as I can, as, as wholeheartedly, because it's my passion right now. Let me tell you, it's, it's, I agree with you. The, the visual helps, but you know what? The podcasting I think is popular because I people it. sometimes it's just easier you can listen to something while you're doing something else or, exactly. or pretending to do something else. Exactly. And, and, and it's a hobby, right? You could go yeah. listen to somebody anytime you want and listen to the you're, show. You're driving. You can listen to it, you know, and, and I love uh, it. It's been one of the best things that's happened to me in my life to have my own show. My own yeah. It's, it's, and it's, um, 
It helps, you know, I, 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 besides speaking to other people, I think that anything that helps people be entertained, especially when crazy things are going on in the There's world. healing modalities. <laughs> Laughing through a podcast or listening to something to get your mind off the pandemic, it's, that's a healing modality. Yeah, it's like, okay, so you know what? I'm, 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 I'm keeping up. That's why I tell, you know, people keep up with me is, hey, because I used to have a farm here before where I was at and now here and my chickens and my dogs because before in uh, my other setting, I used to have like a, my office was behind me and I had like a small bed and all my dogs, you would see them in the background, <laughs> jumping up in bed. Yeah. They would, you'd see them grab my stuffed animals and run off with my stuffed animals. And <laughs> people were paying more attention to what was going on behind me than, oh, and by the way, um, before I forget, what kind of parrots do you have? And the reason why sure. I ask is that my husband has parrots. Oh, wow. I have an African gray named You have an Pepper. African gray. And okay. she's a Timna, so she's a smaller version of it, and she's five years old. And then I have a Sunchi Conyer named Peaches, who's very loud, small oh, bird, very bright. I love those two animals. They got me through their their spirits, uh, their soul family to me. They got me through the pandemic. They've gotten me through the last five years, and I am so connected to them. And I just yes. love I love birds. I love parrots. Yes, they're, my they're, husband has Conyers. He doesn't so have. He has a blue crown. He has a bunch of them. That's his thing in Canaries. I love them. And. Um, before the other, the kid, so. they people don't realize birds. <laughs> they, they're smart. very smart. They're baby Especially, dinosaurs, right? Yeah, that's right. That's hey, it, it's Jurassic Park. You know, it's like Absolutely. they're like they're like once upon a time that that would have been a Velociraptor. I have like a double decker cage that I put them in in the bedroom, and when I do episodes, most of the time I'm working during the day. They're in the other room, uh -huh. and. I make the habit when I get up that I'll say good morning to Pepper because she's the upper cage and she's the one that's vocal in the morning. And I got to remind myself Peaches is under her because if I don't say hi to Peaches, you can tell she gets offended. Birds have personality just like Yes, dogs. they do. Yes, they and do. And so I they changed do. it up. I changed it up. I greet Peaches first and she gets all animated and, and then Pepper. And so I know that they are just a part of my life right now at this point. And it's important that we recognize the value that animals and you know what animals. people don't realize especially the bigger parrots they have a very long life 80 years in, yes Never live 80 years and i'm gonna have to make provisions in my will for that so yes people don't realize those are very long living pets again uh for my podcast listeners jason where can they go to to find your sure. information about the show and the podcast um you know uh, for the show, you can go to, uh, I guess it would be D Social Psychic, the letter D, www the letter D for okay. letter David, socialpsychicradio.com. And uh, from, for anything regarding me being like intuitive psychic or anything like that, just go to the socialpsychic.com, www.thesocialpsychic.com. I'm also on social media like Instagram, Twitter, uh, Facebook. I have a group for both the psychic group of me as well as the, the show. And um, okay. so they can find me on any of those. If you Google Jason Zook, the social psychic, I'll pop up. There you will, you will be found. Perfect. Absolutely. Again, Jason, thank you. It has been wonderful to speak to you again. Oh, Marlene, you're a, you're a treat. I am so happy we got to know each other. We know. And I'm looking forward I know. to having you on the show again in the future because your background is fascinating to me. Likewise, and thank you it's, for been, me on it's here. been great. I have so enjoyed this and I, I want to wish you the best of luck on all your projects and we'll be talking soon. I look forward to it. Take care. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Of course. Bye-bye. Have a good night. Wow. Yeah. See, that is, I had spoken to him. Uh, what was it? I interviewed on his podcast like two weeks ago, something like that. And it was great. It was fantastic. I, I enjoyed myself because he's he's a very down to earth person, um, and you know, and we didn't get a chance to talk about it. He's also worked, you know, with a friend of his about like well, he mentioned it momentarily about working on cold cases and um, things of this nature. And people don't realize, yeah, uh, and with you know, because have a lot of people think of psychics and you know, and these cold cases and things like this. And people don't realize that sometimes um, – how can I say it? Um, a lot of these cases, they become cold. Sometimes it's because for lack of leads, all right? Um, how can I say it? If it's somebody that gets the, – the, the remains are dumped somewhere, time goes by, it becomes disintegrated – the point maybe no body is found 
um, or people that know things move away, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I'm going to say, you know, a lot of police departments, um, sometimes if there's a disposition to ask a psychic for help, usually it's way, in other words, it's when the case is cold, <laughs> you know, it's when they've run out of options, uh, they, that they go ahead and they maybe reach out and try to get psychic impressions. And by then, again, you know, you could have a, a psychic tell um, a detective, hey, you know what? And, and I'm talking, you know, this person is, like he described, uh, this person is buried in a, underneath the foundation or, in, you know, basically encased in cement. That's very, very difficult, okay, for a police department to go in there. Okay, and unless they had something else that I want to say, let's face it, something, and, and by the way, I wasn't kidding when you went, okay, this is my little dog that's making so much. Um, when sometimes very, very cunning and intelligent psychopath killers that know exactly, in other words, they're not these sloppy killers that kill and then they, they're they like running around trying to figure out what they're going to do next. These are the ones that already know, I'm going to kill this person and then I'm going to dispose of their body, not just like throwing it down a ravine or wherever. I'm going to get rid of this person by, I'm going, there's a building and they've excavated the foundation and they are about to lay that cement down and I know that once that's done, I can, um, I don't have to worry about it. And shh, hey, cut it out. That's my kid, as in my dogs. My children are already grown up. Whoever that is scratching, cut it out. Psst, hey, you know what th that is, that noise is, and I'm sorry to interrupt it. You know how when people spend a lot of money on Christmas, and their kids end up playing with a box. That's my dog that has run into an empty box. And she decides that she wants to dig a hole to China, but through the box. Getting back to what I was saying. But anyway, this example that he gave, how difficult do you think it would be now for maybe those detectives to go back up and basically tear up a concrete floor uh, to look for the remains of this, of this girl, of this lady? It's very, very difficult. Even if, even if the detective believes it, they would have to probably provide something really concrete in order to get the court order or whatever to do that. Bottom line, it, on the recommendations of a psychic saying, I feel this person's there, it's not going to fly. Um, so a, a, a lot of times, um, unfortunately, a lot of these cold cases, they go cold for lack of manpower, lack of clues. And by the time they're willing to take the help of a psychic, a lot of the corroborating evidence, let's say that the psychic could offer has disappeared. Okay. Um, for example, same the same thing. Let's say let's say this is a crime where the body was dumped outside, not in a, and maybe this this spirit is telling the psychic, you know, hey you guys stop it, uh, you know they you can, they can find me uh, in a shallow grave by the water tower, whatever. Uh, well, what happens is obviously there's. You know, one of the most immediate things, of course, is decomposition, you know, also depending on the weather. But let's say it's not freezing or anything. Uh, decomposition, but then people don't realize you might get animals, depending on where it is, where the bones get scattered. Bottom, bottom line that even if you have a psychic that tells a detective or whoever, you know what, this person can be found under here and her body can be, they could go out there. And they'd be lucky, especially depending on how long that person was stayed out there. They could not find anything. Or they might find one little thing. And it, at the same time, it might not be, um, how can I say, uh, it not, 
they could find maybe one sliver of bone because by then, by the time they actually looked for help, what was there that could have identified indisputably this is the re the remains of this victim have been scattered. It's deteriorated. It's gone. Uh, it's whatever the case might be. Um, and the reason why also I bring that up is because for a lot of psychics or people that are intuitive or sensitive about this, sometimes you get very frustrated, especially when you have an intuition or you have this communication from that victim that you want something to be done about it. And sometimes it just doesn't happen because In other words, it's 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 almost like uh, something that you have to learn to deal with, because you realize no matter how much I try, how good maybe the information is, I cannot make this. In other words, you 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 give the information, and you learn to deal with the outcome, which is this might never get solved. Uh, nobody might pay attention to me or whoever's hands it comes into says, ah, I can't do anything with this. I, I believe it. It sounds plausible, but I can't do anything with it. And the reason why I say this, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, you know, even now with police departments, even before that there was less, more personnel, in other words, yeah, you know, all these um, cases that come in, um, we're going to use, let's say, a homicide uh, unit. There's only X amount of manpower that they've got. And they get a case. And sometimes, you know, like that that show, the first 48, and it's true. Usually your best uh, indicator that you're going to be able to solve the case happens right away. All right? And it's not only because of X, Y, and Z, you know, being a parent. It's that you're going to get more cases. You're going to get more cases. And usually the ones that have vague, how can I say it? They're not clear cut. There's more investigating, maybe more legwork. I'm not going to say all the time. Guess what? They kind of fall by the wayside, even though they get followed up on. Uh, in other words, there's only so many cases that a unit can handle. And usually it's the most pressing, most, how can I tell you? The ones that have more possibility of being solved that sometimes gets the attention that all cases deserve. That all cases deserve. Because in reality, all cases where you know where a human being has been killed deserves, but that, that that's not the reality of it. And being a psychic, sometimes giving information, you know, you you make your peace with nobody might ever look at this or take it seriously, or maybe they can't do anything with it. And or, and or the other flip side of that, which is there's victims out there, okay, that will come to a psychic medium trying to tell them this is where I'm at because they've never been found. In other words, as far as police are concerned, they might, they might if, if they're lucky, they might be a missing person. But sometimes... If they've lost touch with their family of origin, nobody might have even reported them missing to begin with. But as far as the police is concerned, this person is missing. In other words, they're not looking for the the body or the remains, and much less a perpetrator, because there is no crime attached to that person. But you might have this, um, you know, there's that. Uh, oh God, what's the name of it? that that Hitchcock movie? And I know they, I, I know they've made various versions of it, where you know the, um, you know the the person sees uh, uh, basically uh, 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 the crime of a murder being committed, um, and uh, your the person cannot do anything about it. In other words, and in, and there are some psychic instances, okay. Uh, where you might be getting these impressions or direct communication from the spirit saying, this happened to me, or this was done to me, or this is where I'm at, okay? But 
yeah, you could try going to the police, but the police might say, well, uh, I don't show where this person is even missing. So what do you do with stuff like that? Or maybe what this spirit wants is release as in, I want somebody to know that, you know what, I'm not alive and living on the other side of the country. And even that family that maybe that they were, um, how can I tell you, that they were distant from while they were living, maybe they want to be able to tell them, hey, tell them that this happened to me or tell them that I'm sorry because sometimes maybe, you know, they, they made their own mistakes as far as, you know, going away from their families. Or, hey, I want them to know that I was killed or um, or that, I, and sometimes, and, and, by, and by this, I don't mean because I've even heard of cases, you know, when I say killed, it doesn't necessarily have to be as in a murder scenario, you know, um, and I mentioned this, I think when I was doing the interview with, um, with Jason on his podcast, that there was a, this is back in the 1970s, it was a young man, teenager, he's in Texas, and he's running across this busy, like six lane highway and he gets killed by a truck, dies instantly, doesn't have any ID on him, all right? Uh, they, since he was just killed, they have a, they, they make a, a, a photograph him, they sketch him that you know the police it, and, and he got it, it was in the jurisdiction of a very little town in texas i can't remember it little place and they tried desperately to try to identify him and find his family and they tried and tried and they publicized it all over the place especially because they had a very good likeness of him make a long story short nobody comes forward the people that um, of the town, basically everybody chips in and they bury this young man in a pauper's grave in the cemetery. Uh, and he was dressed like, this was the 70s longish hair, jeans. Um, come to find out later on that, that through the efforts of some investigators and people at the Doe Network, which where they catalog and keep cold cases on, uh, Finally, they I were able to identify him. They exhumed him and they took some DNA. Of course, remember back in the 70s, there was no, no way to match the DNA. But of course, recently, they were able to uh, match him to DNA from one of his family members. They, they started looking at uh, reports of missing people. And apparently he was missing from Mississippi. He was originally from Mississippi. His family lived there. And they reported him there. And apparently he was a wild child. Um, and he would come and go with his family. And, you know, remember the 70s also were famous for the hitchhiking stuff. And bottom line, he had even gone to jail. He'd come out. But his siblings, his mom had already passed away. His sibling says that every once in a while, he would always stay in touch with his mom. And he would come home, you know, he, he wouldn't like totally. And then one day he just disappeared. Uh, they never heard from him again. And finally, they they may basically like verified that it was him through the DNA match from one of the siblings, which was alive, and they were able to basically, um, you know, as much as that family can suspect that maybe something had happened to him, there's there's something there where when you know definitely, you know, my brother, my son whatever the case might be, didn't just abandon us or, hey, act like we didn't exist. They couldn't. And um, my point being that even as a psychic, sometimes there's victims out there that are not on the police's radar. Okay. Because they've never been found. Nobody's reported them. And when they find somebody, let's say, like Jason, sometimes they come through and sometimes... You have nowhere to go with it. You really, really don't. You know, you really, really don't. And that's something you make peace with as a psychic because, you know, contrary to, you know, what we see on the shows and the movies, not everything ends up wrapped up in a bow where, you know, the, the victim is found or, you know, the justice is served, the perpetrator, 
is uh you know goes to you know to the courts and he's judged and you know goes to jail and that's it fade out in the credits roll no there's a lot of times in real life that that is not what happens that is not what happens but anyway guys uh thank you for being part of my audience you guys are wonderful i hope you like this show with jason i'm going to have links uh to the to his website on the credits of the show and uh, again i urge you uh, he is, his podcast is great. Plus he has, does offer the services, uh, of a reading. Uh, and this is the thing, you know, um, sometimes, you know, I, you know, I, from what I understand, he might be able to even give you a reading. It doesn't necessarily have to be, uh, connection with a person that's passed on. You know, he does other types of readings as far as, you know, Maybe you're at a crossroads. God knows everybody's at a crossroads with what's going on around us in the world with, 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 you know, with work and school and life and the COVID and the not and the this and the that. And, you know, a lot of people now are having to make uh, profound decisions. How's that? You know, should I move? Should I not move? Should I go to this type of job? Should, you know, somebody like Jason sometimes is a good person to go to. And by this, I mean, you know, I think family are good and everything. But sometimes our family and or friends, how can I tell you? They're either too soft or too hard on you. <laughs> they either go, yeah, yeah, do that. Or or they're like, oh, man, that's a stupid idea. You know, in other words, sometimes it's good to get a reading from somebody who really has no background information on you doesn't have any prejudice or, or 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 it's favorable towards you where you think oh you know what just like my mother like yeah my mother's gonna tell me because of course you know i'm her child you know or you know you know some type of feedback from somebody who's going to give you what the intuition tells them you know from from the universe or what you know to maybe nudge you in the right way or even maybe look at an aspect that you had not considered um so that's why you go to somebody like Jason, not only for reading to connect with somebody that passed away, but for other other uh, important decisions that sometimes it's good to get a little bit of help on. Again, um, if you want links to any of the shows, you can go to MiamiGhostChronicles.com. I have links to the podcast platforms where the story airs on. But if you would like to hear any of the podcast versions without commercial interruption, I have a link there that will take you where you can either listen to the podcast on your browser or download the MP3 file. The reason why I say this is, you know, the majority of the podcast platforms, uh, and I know people sometimes have their favorite ones, you know, you are going to get the interruptions for, uh, you know, commercials, advertisements, and it is what it is. And um, if you have your story, don't forget, I'm, I'm waiting to get more stories because uh, I, 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 let me tell you something. These last 18 months, uh, a lot of people, there's a lot of spiritual turbulence going on. So I'm waiting to hear those great stories from people who contact me. I already had a few, already had a few. And again, I'm hoping to bring out my uh, next book, which is uh, Hot Dame on a Cold Slab, Film Noir Murders number two, which is supposed to be coming out. I'm, like I said, I'm open. I'm aiming for September 9th. It's the number two that, uh, well, there we go, that uh, comes out after this one. All right. And it's uh, basically true crimes, true crimes, and uh, just how weird people were, even in the good old days. <laughs> I know that sounds like, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, and um, most of these stories, some of them got, got a little bit of press coverage, but it, usually it was um, just like now. It was, uh, you know, while it was going on, you know, it got a lot of press and then it died away, but never like the famous, like the Black Dahlia or, the, you know, the other stuff that, you know, that books even now are still being written about it 50 or 60 or 70 or 80 years later. You know, most of these stories after the initial shock wore off were, they kind of died. You know, they were supplanted by other stories um i think you'll enjoy it like i said i'm, I'm coming after that i'm going to work on another story for my Sybil chronicles universe and um i've got somebody who's contacted me i've had more than 
that they want the true crime, but maybe Old West style. Okay. Uh, an Old West true crime, weird storybook. Something, you know, I'm, I'm percolating it in my head. So again, guys, thank you so much for being part of my audience. You're all wonderful. And please come back next week. I've got a lot of great guests lined up uh, that we're going to have great conversations with. Take care. <laughs>